All of the opinions expressed on this show are those of the hosts or guests and do not necessarily express the views of Pagan Pathways Temple or its affiliates. Welcome to PPT Presents, Episode 18, PPT Saw Its Shadow. Thank you for listening. Today on PPT Presents, we have It Makes You Think with Cynthia Day. She and Fur will be digging deep and talking about shadow work insights. Trigger warning for sensitive folk. Fur does speak a little about the abuses she endured starting at about minute 27. Her description is not graphic in any way, but it may be a sensitive subject to some listeners. And next, something a little different. Steve and I recently had the great privilege of running a workshop at Convocation, the second largest pagan convention in the United States. One of our students recorded the meditation and sent it our way for use on PPT Presents. The meditation for Monsters We Are is to follow It Makes You Think. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of your week. You are listening to Pagan Pathways Temple Broadcast Network. Pagan Pathways Temple is a 5013C not-for-profit organization out of beautiful Madison Heights, Michigan. We offer classes, community outreach, event space, and a library available to our members. To find out more or to become a member, please go to PaganPathwaysTemple.org. Pagan Pathways Temple, growing in the old ways where all paths are open. This PPT Presents broadcast is brought to you by TechWitch Detroit. TechWitch Detroit, for all your IT needs. Please visit us on the web at techwitchdetroit.com. TechWitch Detroit, we can help. Hi there, and thank you for tuning in to It Makes You Think. This is Cynthia Day and Fur. Say hi, Fur. Hi, (laughs) Fur. And we're doing a podcast on, what are we doing? Shadow Work, Insights. Yes. Yes. So. Getting to know thyself. Yes. Getting to know thyself is very yeah. important. And shadow work is one of the, one of the ways that it can be done. Mm-hmm. Um, shadow work. It's something that's supposed to be self-validating. Um, while being somewhat critical of the self, uh-huh. you still have to accept the self yes. for, for what you are because mm-hmm. your experience is your experience and your truth is your truth and nobody else knows your experience right like you do nobody else does nobody else can live your life or learn from your life like you will mhm so first getting to know you i guess the best way to start out is to begin to observe yourself mhm um and that can be done in a variety of ways but you kind of have to step back from it's yourself. Hard. It is hard. But you step back and you sort of examine uh, yourself at any point. How, like, How do you handle different situations? Your bold, outright behaviors without yeah. even thinking about the thoughts that cause the behaviors. But that might be a place to start because it's easier to see. Mm-hmm. You know, when somebody says this... I yell at them or my kids act up. My first reaction is to raise my voice or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. The bold, outright reactions from just road rage to (laughs) um, how you interact with your partner and... Mm -hmm. Or with strangers. Or with strangers. Yeah, or with uh, authority figures or... (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) Or people who you feel you have authority over. Yeah. Yeah, there's that yeah. too. Um, but you observe yourself in uh-huh. any particular thing. And usually, I know people will often observe or choose to observe themselves in ways that uh, they want to figure out which are negative. But shadow work is also about your positive aspects. Yes. Some people have some difficulty accepting the positive aspects about themselves. Uh, yeah. 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 I I'm You're one of, them? one of them. How so? <laughs> um I I think it comes from a background or um I don't know. I was raised to be humble. Uh-huh. And to I I've always had certain expectations put on me. And whether it was from authority figures like at school or parents or just general relationships religion Uh and um you're expected to do certain things you don't 
um, t- toot your own horn, basically. Mm-hmm. You, you don't brag about what you can do. You just do what you do. And I don't expect... I, I love praise. But you don't expect accolades. Yeah, I, I don't expect it. And when I do get it, I cling to those people. I love the praise. And mm-hmm. that might be why I seek it out so much. is because I was... I was never given that much praise or accept it was not so much acceptance but recognition recognition as and, a child and when in relationships or friendships now mm-hmm. um I kind of seek it out or I if I don't get that I feel empty wow that's and, and that's, that's, that's a, a thing that's a, a and That's I'm, a thing for shadow work. Yeah, and I'm realizing how much I need to validate myself instead of looking to others to validate because you're not always going to get people that can reciprocate. Right, and or, some people will invalidate you just because they want to. I've had one or two of those yeah. relationships. So it's important to be able to self-validate and to toot your own horn and and to know yourself enough to be able to say, that when someone starts to invalidate you, you can say, hey, you wait a minute, that's away. not me. Yeah. That's a lie. I don't have to take that in. That's not true. To know your own truth and mm-hmm. to know your own self is a very helpful thing mm-hmm. for keeping oneself on the even keel. Yeah. So the second thing is when you observe yourself, uh, continuity of experience is an important thing. Yeah. So sometimes we forget as time goes on, exactly what really happened. So it's important to record your observations, Mm -hmm. sometimes within a week, sometimes within a day, sometimes Mm -hmm. within moments, because our emotions, our thinking, and our feelings change over time. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes we don't look back and see the same thing exactly the way it happened. Oh, no. There are some things we get upset about, or we get, as, you know, we're... Uh, terribly, uh, terribly grat- you know, happy about, and it, it's not really going to matter as much in a year from now. Right. You're you're broken down in tears over a water bill that you can't pay, and this, and a year from now, that it's not gonna, that big of a thing. It's, it's been paid and taken care of, so it's important to record. Mm-hmm. And I often advise people to journal. Mm-hmm. whenever possible it, it you know and sometimes yeah. it's not possible to journal every single day but making the effort is important mm-hmm. because once you have this stuff jotted down mm-hmm. uh you need to wait a while uh-huh, maybe a day it. or two to review it mm-hmm. uh, because your next step is to reflect on what you've written mm-hmm. to remember the experience that you actually had um, yeah. and to do this without judgment Mm-hmm. Because this is your experience, and the truth of your existence is really your own foothold on reality as you see it. But it is really hard sometimes to be non judgmental with yourself. It's hard it's... because we've been taught to be judgmental about this, that, or the other thing. Yeah. But and... we're talking about shadow work, and this is something that's very individual to each person. And mm-hmm. so it's important that you make up your own rules for yourself. Yeah. Because you are regarding your own self to yourself. Mm -hmm. So you reflect on what you have. And let's say all is well, but you find a discrepancy. You find Mm -hmm. something within yourself that just doesn't make sense to you. So you've waited and you reflected. And now you've revealed something about yourself. And it's important to take that in. And see what that feels Mm -hmm. like. And to do a thing that I like to call tarry with the self. Mm -hmm. Which means that you take it in, you remember it, you look at the emotions that you experienced when you were Mm -hmm. going through it. And you actually feel what you feel about it. And then you allow yourself to process the information that you have. Mm-hmm. And that's an important point because processing is kind of about validation and exception, mm-hmm. exception, acceptance, mm-hmm. and um, just 
loving the self for what mm-hmm. it is. And this is where cognitive dissonance oh, yeah. occur. Even when you're mm-hmm. imperfect. Because cognitive dissonance is, and I'll let you explain and that. That's when your behaviors or your behaviors and sometimes your thought processes don't actually connect with your beliefs or your belief systems. And you may believe that you're a strong, confident woman, but sometimes you break down and cry because this guy didn't talk to you that day or something. Mm -hmm. And you got to acknowledge that you do have weak points. You do have buttons that Mm -hmm. get pushed. Yeah, you're not all powerful. Uh, Yeah. Well, most of the time I am. But (laughs) Well, we're talking about people in general, sir. But there are a few dings in the armor. And... (laughs) <laughs> but there are a few holes in, yeah, in the chain mail. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you got to admit that you do break down and you do have, push, you know, buttons. that yeah, Everybody has hit. buttons. Yeah. Everybody's got trigger points. And some triggers and some buttons are only available to certain people. Right. And some triggers are deeper than you realize. Uh, than you want to admit to. Yeah. Uh, and, um... And yeah. triggers can triggers can lead you to other things within the self. Yeah. And sometimes, depending on how deep that is, you may wish to get assistance in dealing with it yeah. because sometimes Breakdowns are not fun. No, they're not fun. <laughs> and sometimes um, <laughs> shadow work <laughs> shadow work for some people can become too introspective. At which point, they really want to seek out help for another person's yeah. perspective on themselves because even though we started this by saying that shadow work is for the self there are times when you, you may actually obsessed. need help with the self yeah from a, from a trained professional that's yes. going to help you validate mm-hmm. your own self mm-hmm. and get your own self together because other people may not know how to do that for you other people may have no business trying to do that for yeah. you if you can't do it for yourself, definitely mm-hmm. seek out someone who has the training to help you see through it. It helps to see to have through it. Objective point of view. Yeah. Because uh, professionals, uh, hopefully, are objective. Hopefully. And if they're not, find another one that yes. is. Because yeah. not every therapist is for every person. No. And not every therapist is for every problem for every person. True. So just like with anything else, shop around. Yeah. But anyway, getting back to cognitive dissonance. Um, accepting and validating your experience is important because you get to say, oh, that's me. Mm-hmm. Recognizing the self um, as in this is my truth. Mm-hmm. This may not be anybody else's truth, mm-hmm. but this is true about me. Mm-hmm. So an example. Mm, let's take an example for me. Um, okay. I have had a problem in the past of looking people in the eye. I had a problem with social anxiety. Okay. And it took a lot of work on myself Mm -hmm. to get me to the point where I could be present with people Mm -hmm. and be, um, how do I want to say, uh, More than just being present, being emotionally available to people. Yeah. Because I had been hurt before and hurt deeply. Mm -hmm. And it led me into being this sort of socially isolated person. Yeah. And in doing some of the shadow work to get me out of that, um, I found that I was placing the hurt that I had received from one person. Mm Mm-hmm. And putting it on everybody else that I saw, thinking that everyone was going to hurt me once Mm -hmm. they got to know me. Yeah. And it took some time for me to recognize that that was just something within myself that I had taken on as my truth, but it was not true. And I had Mm -hmm. to reveal that to myself. And that was Mm -hmm. difficult. And then slowly I got to the point where, for me, um, I tarried with it within Mm -hmm. myself and also... In real life with other people, mm-hmm. I would feel the uh, uncertainty. I would feel the, the fear being mm-hmm. with people and trying to look people in the eye and trying to engage in conversation. Mm-hmm. And I would feel that fear and I would tarry with it. And over time, it got easier 
and easier mm-hmm. and easier. But believe me, in the beginning, it was hard, nigh on impossible yeah. for me to mm-hmm. come out of myself and be with folks. And I had help because it was difficult for me. Mm-hmm. I had a friend by the name of Rena who literally would take me by the hand into situations where I had to communicate and look with pe- look at people. And she would hold my hand or she would sit beside me or she would help, um, you practice. help me practice. And she was an exceptional friend. She mm-hmm. wasn't a therapist, but she knew what it was like to feel that way mm-hmm. because she had come in from Russia. Okay. Yeah, she, she lived in Russia th- for most of her life and she taught herself English. Yeah. God rest her soul. She was one of the best friends I've ever had. And it, it really. She had to custom or to get used to to new people, customs new customs, and, new ways that yeah, people talk. She like knew what it was stuck like on a different planet. Yeah. Know? So I had to sit through those um, uncomfortable mm-hmm. uh, situations in my mind mm-hmm. and in reality. And in reality, I had help. And when I was by myself and I was processing all of this, mm-hmm. I could say to myself, you know what, it wasn't that bad. What I thought was going to happen never happened. Mm-hmm. You know, 90% of the problems that we face never actually happen. <laughs> we, just sort of make, my... we just sort of make it for ourselves in our head. Yeah, as, uh, and generally I... people are, for the most part, good. They're not out, most people are not out to get people. Well... Some are, but yeah. most people aren't. Yeah. And we usually have some sort of system within ourselves uh, that put up red flags that let us know, wait a minute, this person's really making me feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I digress. Getting back to uh, cognitive dissonance mm-hmm. and recognizing yourself in it. Comes a time when you have to include these aspects in your own identity. Mm-hmm. So, I could no longer see myself as someone who was socially inept and socially unable to uh, move through society Mm -hmm. or through a room of people, for that matter, with any grace. And now, years later, um, I've shoveled off all of that fear Mm -hmm. and uh, regret that I may have had and Mm -hmm. um, the lies that person told me that people wouldn't like me I had to shovel that off of Mm -hmm. myself too and finally I emerged as this person who is pretty good when it comes to uh Mm -hmm. talking to other people and okay when it comes to walking through a room of people that I don't know you know to the point where I can stand up in front of people and talk to people I mean it's not like I don't have any um um fear but my fear helps me to get through it. So aspects that we take in and recognize about ourselves. Recognizing that these are not obstacles, but that they are opportunities for growth and acceptance even of your positive self. It's important also to value your experiences and to give yourself compassion because sometimes that's the hardest of all giving yourself the compassion that maybe other people didn't. Okay. Um, and learning to work with your own frailties and foibles and to honor them yeah. as stepping points of which help you to interact with other people because then you see other people have foibles and frailties and faults. Yeah. And you're better able to say, oh, well... I know my own frailties yeah. and foibles and faults. I'm maybe not going to judge that other person so harshly for theirs. They may not be dealing with them the way I may be. Their truth yeah. is not my truth and my truth is not theirs. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it's also important to note, and you were the one that was telling me, that every flaw... Every strength can be considered a flaw. Every flaw can be considered a strength. And it's... How does that work? um, uh, 
It's like when you were you were taught something about when you're going to an interview that yeah, um, one of the best ways to handle a situation when you're learning to know yourself. If you identify yourself as somebody so strong or independent, if you say, well, I'm independent, I can handle anything, mm -hmm. but the fact is, is that if you make yourself too independent, you, if you are too independent, it's hard to connect with other people. That's true. And you can go over the line. If you're very self-confident, I can handle anything, you want, you know, walk on water and do all this stuff. You could put people off for one. For one, you <laughs> can, you cause dissonance with people in general, but the self-confidence turns into arrogance and they'll turn people away from you. Yeah, you're right about that. And I've had relationships with people like that. Actually. Uh, yeah. Um, but anything that you you know, self-dependent and, you know, self-reliant. If you take self-reliance too far, which I have experience with, mm -hmm. you learn not to trust anybody. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's important to maintain connection with people. Yeah, because the, the connection balance. You find the balance because the connection that you have with people is somewhat dependent upon the connection that you have with yourself and that's one of the points of shadow work is yeah. really connecting with yourself on a deep level so that your experience can mesh with other people's experience mm -hmm. and by that I mean just like you say um, being self-reliant is one thing but being to the point where you're arrogant other people don't want to be around you oh. other people don't want to yeah. um, um, feel because your arrogance is there, it can make other people feel small, like yeah. they're incapable, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want to engender that in other people. Well, it's not so much that, but uh, uh, putting it into perspective and mm -hmm. realizing that a lot of it might be coping mechanisms. Yeah. I, I developed a strong sense of identity independence and self-reliance because of my abuse history. Yeah. Because nobody else was going to take care of me. I got to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Fuck the... Yeah. <laughs> we can say that word. <laughs> Fuck y'all. I'm, I'm do doing me. I, I'm going to do me. But in getting with relationships and stuff, it is very hard to accept trust or try to trust other people and rely on other people because everybody mm -hmm. else has let me down. Yeah, Why you're not I... used to it. Yeah, and it scares the living mess out of me. Yeah. And it really has. And trying to accept that I can rely on other people is... Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's providing you with a new aspect of your own identity. Yeah. Because not only are you capable... Uh, of handling of things on yourself, you're also capable of trusting other people and being able to relax and and lean occasionally. That's weird. It is weird. I, it, it's it's got to feel weird. Yeah, it, it is. I I I can't even trust my children's father to even take care of his children. You know, to help with his children mm -hmm. because he's let me down so many times. Right. I know it's, and you can't get blood from an orange. That's you, true. You, can, you can't. Some people you just cannot trust, but then they, you run up on people that you can trust, and you can, um, you know, over time you learn that you can trust some people with some things. And even though there's never been a time when they let you down, or, you know, it, it's, there will be times that people that you can trust or can rely on, there will be outstanding circumstances. They, they can't be there for you every time, but... Mm -hmm. If for the most but you part, find balance. For the most part, they are there for you, but you still look for reasons why you can't trust them. And that's self-defeating. That's sabotaging. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. But as far as shadow work goes, it's important and, to know these things about yourself because and, you may learn about it. You and, may set up situations 
if you don't mm-hmm. learn about this aspect of yourself where you become a self-defeating prophecy. Yeah. You know, because if, if you're looking for somebody to constantly let you down, you'll find somebody, somebody who will constantly <laughs> let you down. <laughs> yeah. But if inside you know that um, some people, after a period of trial and error, you learn that you can trust. Mm-hmm. then there's a part of you that says, okay, well, I can relax in this instance with this person. Yeah. And it's really great when you can do that because when I first learned with my friend Rena that mm-hmm. I could relax and be who I was in her presence, mm-hmm. she was like the first person that I could totally just be me with after my abuse mm-hmm. issues from so many years ago, mm-hmm. other than my husband, of course. But... Yeah. um because he's one of those fabulous people that yeah, he accepts me for... He's a sweetheart. He accepts me for who I am. And you cannot ask for more than that. Mm-hmm. I accept him for who he is. And we, we've we been sailing together mm-hmm. for 16 years. And mm-hmm. we're still... I know I'm happy. And he says he's happy. And he seems to be happy. So I'm going to believe it. Yeah. You know. And so... But with my friend Rena, she was one of the first people outside of my inner circle of people that I learned that I could trust Mm -hmm. and she helped me through a very hard time Mm -hmm. and the shadow work of all that was very difficult and very hard Mm -hmm. to do because it required that I actively seek out people to look at to talk to to engage with Mm -hmm. and it wasn't just shadow work that was all about oh me just writing stuff down on a piece of paper and Um, reflecting on it and saying, oh, wow, that's me. Gosh, you know, this was a situation where I actually had to go out and be me amongst other people, which is also a kind, I had to change me and change my behavior. And it was possible because of the shadow work I was doing. Mm -hmm. And it was possible because of the good friend I found that I could trust. So in all of that, we have to seek our own equilibrium of what we can live with, with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because once I found out that, um, I didn't have to be so shy and that I could engage with people. Mm -hmm. It meant that I was a different person now than I was Mm -hmm. when I began my shadow work. Mm -hmm. And that was a bit of cognitive dissonance for me. Mm -hmm. And that was a bit of um, re-establishing my identity by including Mm -hmm. that as part of myself. I was no longer shy. I was no longer uh, introverted as much as I was. I I have a strong extroverted streak that because of my abuse, it was beaten down. Yeah. It ain't beaten down anymore, as I'm Mm -hmm. sure you all can tell. (laughs) Yeah. I've never been shy, but I've never had any expectations on others. Mm -hmm. Because I I expected everybody to, especially men, I've, I've expected all men to just use and abuse me. And that's really, really sad. And I'm sorry to hear that. But I know what it's like to have negative expectations of people. And I know what it's like to go through the cognitive dissonance of (laughs) tarrying with yourself and learning um, that life doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. And shadow work is sometimes painful in that way. <laughs> and other times it makes you laugh at yourself. And at other times it's like, oh, wow, I had no idea I was this wonderful, beautiful person inside, yeah. but I just haven't been allowed to show it. Mm-hmm. You know, shadow work can bring out beautiful things. Mm-hmm. And I think it always brings out self, self-validating ways in mm-hmm. which we can either modify ourselves yeah. recognize ourselves or change ourselves that that's what we decide to do mm-hmm. I decided to do it and I did it and it worked with help from a friend Yeah, and I'm hoping that with my help as a friend yeah you have helped me a lot that I help you to overcome some but... of that mistrust of people granted some mm-hmm. mistrust is well placed but it's, with people you don't know it's good to have some cynicism but I, it, not to the point where it's affecting your ability to connect to others. Right. And that's and that's really important. Because one of the biggest things that I've been seeking out is the ability to have a healthy relationship. But if I constantly throw stuff in there, mistrust, um, 
what is it? Disbelief. Disbelief. Negative um, expectations. Negative expectations. Um, I'm constantly looking for things to be wrong. It's things that don't really mean anything. Yeah. And it's going to trip you up. And it's going to cause problems in it in healthy relationships. Mm-hmm. I'm going to actually, it's a self fulfilling prophecy. And, right. And, but I need to change that. Yeah. And one of the things I have to do is just change my thought processes and behaviors because one of my biggest things I'm afraid that I get too clingy and I get too because I want to be validated so much in a relationship I, I want somebody to constantly say you know, you're tell okay them I'm, I'm pretty and stuff now isn't and, that a strange thing to hear from a person who just a moment ago said how independent I, she could be I, I know is cognitive, cognitive dis- dissonance that's dissonance. what we're talking about yeah and I'm it's I want to believe one thing and your well, experience is different yeah well it, my behavior is different and right. I but the the biggest thing is is that with most people who have been sexually abused mm-hmm. as a child or molested, they equate sex with love. If I'm not constantly getting sexual attention or um, attention with physical attractiveness or something, I want to be wanted. I need to be wanted. I want that yeah. attention. But there's a whole part of you and that has nothing to do with that part that of you. Sex, yeah. With sex, that is... Something that people love about you, many things that people love about you, but and learning to trust that is a hard part of of and, shadow work. I understand that, and the fact that it, it's probably why I'm such an attention whore. I yeah, I I, I, I I find that I'm a bit of an attention person myself. Now that I'm and, now that that extroverted streak is out there, I'm loving every bit of attention I get. Yeah, and that and is perfectly honest, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm constantly throwing out sexual jokes and sexual innuendos and stuff, and it's because I want that attention. I want somebody to say, "Oh my God, for okay, okay, all right." You know, but that's see. a part of that's a part of your shadow work. Yeah, that, and um, I'm working on. And the thing is, is that I'm. It almost feels like I'm, not being validated or not being attractive if somebody doesn't always respond to it even if right. it's negative any attention is attention, attention. Yes. yes just I, to just to feel that you're really there yeah yeah and but it, it's, what we're what we're going for though is to be self-validating yeah self-validating i don't need everybody else's attention and even when i'm not in a relationship i'm constantly looking for attention that's why when I'm not in a steady relationship, a regular relationship, mm-hmm. I would go out and have booty calls on occasion, you know, a weekly. I mean, and <laughs> that's not a good lifestyle. Good way to be. To, that can be a dangerous lifestyle yeah, in today's it day is. and age. And, yeah. And but that's. But that's I, where I, it led you to, I guess. And a lot of women, and especially women who have been abused, abused. they can they, they can turn um, into. I guess they can they can understand how you feel, and I guess yeah. a lot of women can identify with that because, as women in America, we're we're taught to get some kind of attention, yeah, some way or another. Sexualized in a lot of different ways. Um, so, shadow work takes on many forms for many people. Sometimes yeah. it's really deep, and you might need help with it. Yeah. Sometimes it's fun even laughable, and you giggle with yourself. Because I know that learning to laugh at yourself Mm -hmm. for whatever reason is one of the most healthiest things that you can do. And if you're doing shadow work, it's it's humbling. But if you're doing shadow work and you find that you can laugh at yourself, I think you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Yep. Laugh at yourself in in a joyful kind of way. Well, this has been the 18th edition. Yes. Of It Makes You Think. Mm Mm-hmm. And I hope that we've given you some things to think about because we've touched on some things that, well, I didn't quite expect to, but <laughs> a lot of people can definitely get some get something out of it. Yeah. So I'm going to say goodbye. Say goodbye for... <laughs> goodbye for... <laughs> and that will be it for this edition of It Makes You Think. And as always, we hope it makes you think. Yeah.
Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. You are listening to the Pagan Pathways Temple Broadcast Network. The following is a meditation that Steve and I did at Convocation. If you are in a car or you're in a place where you need to be fully awake and aware, you may want to go ahead and save this for another time. Thanks. So, my friends, please close your eyes. Feel your shoulders drop away from your ears. Feel your cheekbones drop from your eyes. Feel your mouth resonant and open. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Imagine a candle flame flickering in the distance. Focus on the flame in your mind's eye. As you focus on the flame, the world around you will slowly start to become smaller and smaller. Feel the rest of the room slip away. You are now alone in a dark room, only illuminated by that single candle. body slowly becoming lighter. Starting at your feet and moving up to your legs. Feel the lightness growing. Up through your hips. Sequentially moving up from the floor. From your hips, find your time in your center, within your heart center, the center of love and devotion. And as you feel ready, find yourself at your throat. Breathe. place where your thoughts are and where you tend to think and frown. Feel the lightness catch you there. You are now 
now weightless. You can feel only the slightest connection with the ground at your toes. Feel your body starting to slowly drift up. As you drift up into the air, you move away from the light in the camp. With each breath, the candle grows more faint and flickers in the distance. You move slowly and steadily into the unknown darkness. Once the candle is no longer within your vision, you stand suspended in a space of absolute nothingness. You feel nothing except your heartbeat and your breathing. Breathe and connect with this feeling of nothingness. You hear a faint breathing in the distance. It is not human nor animal of any kind you have heard. You move toward it without fear or hesitation. As you move toward this, you begin to feel the warmth of whatever this creature is. <laughs> You, with each breath, you feel its body growing near, but do not feel fear for it. You know this form, for this form resides within you, and has through all time. It lives in the dark places that the light is not allowed to pierce. in this moment. Slowly you reach your hand out and touch the creature. Feel the texture of its flesh. This feels like home from a distant memory from another life. <coughs> the creature moves closer against you and whispers a single word in your ear. resonates with you. Staying there with this creature. And communing. It seems you have much to discuss. Discuss now.
continue to spend time in the presence. Creature has brought you to a clear blue pool surrounded in lush environment. There are vines, there are flowers. Beast has led you to this pool <coughs> and wishes to be bathed. Lead the beast into the water. Lead this creature there. All the things that you need to bathe this, this creature are there. Show it the kind of care and concern that you would for your most near, dear, and treasured individuals. As you complete this task, dry the creature. Find them a comfortable space where they may reside in a way you find them. Slowly let the lush oasis fade from your view. And you are safely, comfortably drifting. center, growing more. Feel your heart center, the center of love and devotion. 
breathe through your heart center. And send love to your creature. they are with you now and in times of trouble they will assist you now rub your hands together feel the healing light from the knee within your palms emanating. Place your palms in front of your eyes. And then, as you are ready, open your eyes into the loving, healing energy. Thank you for listening to Pagan Pathways Temple Broadcast Network. This week's words to live by. You may know that this conclusion is what is termed as magic. Magic is, in fact, everything that absolutely fascinates minds and attracts souls by means of words and deeds. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next time. You have just listened to a Pagan Pathways Temple Broadcast Network recording. Pagan Pathways Temple is a 5013C not-for-profit organization out of beautiful Madison Heights, Michigan. We offer classes, community outreach, event space, and a library available to our members. To find out more or to become a member, please go to PaganPathwaysTemple.org. Pagan Pathways Temple, growing in the old ways where all paths are open. This PPT Presents broadcast is brought to you by TechWitch Detroit. TechWitch Detroit, for all your IT needs. Please visit us on the web at techwitchdetroit.com. TechWitch Detroit, we can help!